Um, also, I can't see anyone. What is happening? All right, but I think I see my brother. Was good. What's up? I see my husband wearing a shirt that says "My wife is running for Congress." All day, all day. All day. This is the vibe. All day. Just saying. Um, all right. So, ever hi, hi. I'm so grateful for you all for being here, for being so supportive of our campaign. I'm so excited um, to hopefully try to make you laugh. And um, also tell you a little bit about my story. So my name is Dinan Abdul Hamid, um, and I am a candidate for Congress in New York's 12th district. And um, you know, running for office has been really incredible. I've learned a lot over the past year. We launched the campaign last April, and it's been such a life-changing experience. You know, um, as you all can imagine. Especially as a young woman of color, it's been the easiest experience of my life. <laughs> you know, every single morning I wake up and I call my multi-millionaire friends, I have so many of them, and I ask them to donate to my campaign, and they do, they don't ask me any questions. <laughs> they never ask me about my experience. They never, I never have imposter syndrome in explaining my experience. And I just want to say that the U.S. government's electoral politics is such a diverse place. Like, I have never seen so many black and brown women in every single space I entered. It's truly like so touching. I highly recommend. Um, so yeah, I'm just joking. It's not like that. It's rough. It's real rough. I just want to say, you know, um, there are a lot of things people did not tell me when they were like trying to convince run for office. And so if you are thinking about running for office, um, I'm up here to try to let you know, give you some warning signs um, in case you are thinking of doing this. So the first thing is that actually it is really expensive to run for office. And I didn't know that at all. Guess how much money it costs to run for office? Someone guess. A million dollars. A million dollars. Good, that's good. That's in the ballpark. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> no one told me. <laughs> I have to tell you two million, double it, two million. Um, and actually, you know, the whole process has been really hard because I'm 28 and all of my friends are broke. <laughs> and so when I call my friends and I'm like, hey, yo, you know, I'm running for Congress, I'm doing this thing. Um, would you mind donating to my campaign? They're like, yo, I was about to call you for some rent money. <laughs> and then, and literally, I end the call with a hundred dollars less. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, like being empathetic and running for Congress is like the work. Like, it's not gonna work out. Yeah, it's been hard. So actually, this is, you know, I know this is a comedy fundraiser, but I actually decided right now that we should not make this a comedy thing. We should just make it a fundraiser. And so we're just going to make this Masa style, Masa style, okay? I'm just going to call out numbers. And if you want to donate, like, everybody close the door. No one's allowed to leave. Sada's <laughs> proud of me. She's like, yes. <laughs> and she's tired of call time. She's like, no, no, no call time anymore. I'm just joking. No, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that to you. You're too nice. Um, no, but for real, it is, it is hard. And, you know, we've committed to not taking corporate money. Hey, <laughs> Um, the other thing that I highly recommend is, you know, or highly do not recommend. So actually, um, I don't know if any of much of y'all know, but I actually got married this year. I shot him out on Instagram because he's a really great campaign husband. Um, and I do not recommend getting married while you're running for office <laughs> during a pandemic. <laughs> but if you, who got married? Did anyone get married during the pandemic? I'm judging you, super spreaders. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, but so yeah, it was it was it was difficult. And the most difficult part, honestly, though, was you know every time um, my friends were just really shocked about my husband because every time I would introduce him, they would always ask where he was from, and it was really embarrassing for me to have to say that he was from New Jersey. <laughs> Um, and I'm not a good liar, so it was hard. Um, 
Um, okay, okay, I'm gonna say the third thing that's been hard about running for office. I'll tell you the good things later, I promise. Um, the third thing that's been hard about running for office is that you have, like, I have no time to do anything. <laughs> so this is real, it's all awesome. But I have no time to eat, I have no time to sleep, hang out with my family, all the things. But one of the difficult things is I haven't had time to watch Love is Blind. <laughs> I just, I have a question, who is Shake? <laughs> Why does everybody in America hate Shake? <laughs> Do you know who Shake is? Oh, you're really bad. Yeah, alright, one day, June 28th, I'm going to watch. That's the day of the election. Okay, maybe June 29th. <laughs> and then I'll know who Shake is. And then we'll all just like, okay, Shake. Okay. Um, but yeah, okay, so um, the other thing is that people ask me questions all the time, which is like, which is fair, like I, I'm happy to answer questions. And I thought I'd be super prepared because I was raised by like a ton of immigrant aunties who ask me questions about my life all the time too. But the two questions that everybody asks me, well, the first thing is everybody's always asking me why I'm running for college, which is real word, I'll tell you, I'll let you know, I'll keep it real. Um, but I'll just say, you know, Congress is like 80% white, the average age is 60, like what else do I have to explain, right? Like, that's the obvious fact. <laughs> But you know, I, 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 as many of you probably know, I'll tell you a little bit about my story, but I was born and raised in this district. I love New York City. Um, I rep Queens so hard before I even say yeah. <laughs> Um, before I introduce my name, I'm like, hi, I'm from Queens. <laughs> nice to meet you. And so I just love this city. And I grew up, born and raised in Queens, grew up in this district. My parents are both immigrants from Egypt. Um, and I really saw Whoa! the way, oh, hey. Um, I really saw the way that they, you know, struggled as working class people to provide for me and my family. And the reality is that this city has only become more and more unequal, more and more difficult for our communities to not only survive, but to thrive. And I believe that we deserve a city where everyone, everyone can be happy, right? Everyone can not, not only struggling to pay rent, but also just like live a good quality of life, be proud to send their kids to New York City Public School so it's not a joke. And, and this is the, one of the wealthiest districts in the country. This is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. We have the resources to make a city that is for all of us. And I came to this work <clears throat> as an organizer. So I started as a movement person first, now I'm into electoral. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Oh. And I actually am a survivor of a hate-based attack. I was walking down the street in Queens. I was assaulted by a man who tried to take off my hijab. And um, I actually, from that experience, started training women in self-defense. I'm a first-degree martial artist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Karate, so I can teach you. Um, and I care deeply about making sure that this world is safe for all of us. And in the face of just the rising anti-Asian hate, the face of the rising anti, and the, not rising, I hate to use that word because you know this is a pervasive historic, it's been ongoing. The reality that's facing LGBTQ community, Muslim community, Black and Brown folks, like it is a really harsh world that we exist in. And, so much of our vision is creating and leading from a place of empathy and creating and leading with, with what is the world that we want to build for, being bold and being courageous and not being coming at this from a scarcity mindset. And I came to this race in the middle of the pandemic, kind of like I came to love. And um, it was it was a really it was a really hard moment because I saw how my community, you know, and so many people in Queens, we didn't have the healthcare infrastructure. Our hospitals were completely overwhelmed. And it was in those moments. Well, I had always been in movement space, and you know, I believe in movement, but and I believe that we need kind of the structural change that will, that will allow us to 